In this video, you will see Kelly and Maria trying to graph the speed of a football. As they work, consider the obstacles they encounter and think about how you might draw the graph. Graph the speed of the football for all moments in time. So we have distance over time. Uh, isn't that just drawing us the speed already? Well, you'd have distance divided by time. Um, so I guess that wouldn't wouldn't technically be the speed because you have to calculate what the distance is over time. Right. So your speed would be different than what's on that line. Does right. that make sense? Wait, isn't speed the derivative? Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. So we're just finding the derivative of this thing? Yeah, so I think oh. we're trying to graph the derivative. OK. That works. Um, you're just like. I don't know, eyeball it? Yeah, I think so. So, so what do you think it would look like if we, we drew like the derivative of this thing? Briefly, that it's just like slow and it speeds up and then he releases the ball. Okay. So that's just kind of showing that it's a slow rate at the beginning. Yeah. And then it goes up. And it's always positive. So that works. Yeah. So I guess that works, but I don't really know how precise it is. I mean, mm -hmm. like, does he kind of stop when he pulls the ball back? Oh, so like you're saying really that's not really shown tell. there? Yeah, it's just not really precise enough. Okay. I think that if we were to pick a couple points in time and mm -hmm. see, calculate the speed, that might okay. give us a more precise graph. Maybe. So if we, if we take, like, uh, at one second, mm -hmm. the distance is about a half. So a half over one second would be half speed. Because half speed something is distance per... over time? Yeah, okay. that's what I'm thinking. So we're looking for distance over time. If at one second it's a half, it'll be like here. Mm -hmm. And then at three, it would be at one. one over three. What? Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, you know what? But so that's the change in the distance over the change in time. And we're only doing a point. <laughs> Oh. So instead of um, d over t, we want to do delta d over delta yeah. t? Okay. Um, so for delta t, we just want like a small time interval? Yeah. Okay. So maybe if we did from like 0. 0.9 to 0. 1.1. 1. That's hard to see though because we do. Do you think it's too big if we do 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.15? To graph 0. 0.5 to 1.5? Um, yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Um, 0. 0.5. Okay. And 1.5. So. so the distance at 0.5 is about 0. And the distance traveled at 1.5 is almost 1. We'll just do 1. So that gives us negative 1 on the numerator and negative 1 on the denominator, which is 1. So then on our graph of speed, that's what it look like that's our estimate yeah, at one so okay so now let's do two so that would give us zero okay which i guess makes sense because it's kind of a flat i guess it's like so. a plateau there right because we're finding the slope mm -hmm. when we're taking the average rate of change mm -hmm. okay so two would be zero and then three so then we have to do 3.5 and 4.5 mm -hmm. that's what two okay So that gives us one again. At 5.5, let's see. Oh gosh, four. Okay. The distance would be four. It's gonna be negative two over negative one. So we'd get positive two. So right now, if I were to just connect the points, I'm not sure what it would look like connecting from zero. Like, would I just connect the origin to that, I guess? Okay. I guess so, because like from 0 to 0.5, it's kind of flat, like mm -hmm. we were talking about with the slope. So this is kind of what our speed would look okay. like, or the derivative of that function? Maybe. I mean, it makes sense for the points that we've plotted anyway, but I don't know about the ones in between. Right. In this video, Kelly and Maria used average rates of change to plot points on the derivative graph, but weren't sure how accurate their graph was between the plotted points. We'll explore how to graph derivative functions in upcoming videos.